I have here a 0.96 inch OLED monochrome display. It has 128 by 64 pixels resolution. It's a little cute and a small display which can be accessed using an I squared C communication protocol. Other variation uses SPI protocol which have higher transfer rate versus the I squared C. Having faster transfer rate equates to higher refresh rate, especially if you want to use it for, let's say, for gaming consoles. But it should be more than enough for now. I connected it to ESP32 development board since it uses an I squared C protocol. It only needs four wires to interface to microcontroller. Two for the power, the red and the black, which are the BCC and the ground. And another two for the I squared C data lines, which are the data and the clock lines. The OLED SCL pin is connected to GPIO 22 of ESP32, while the SDA pin of the OLED display is connected to GPIO 21. GPIO 21 and 22 are the hardware dedicated I squared C pins in ESP32. Now for the software part, we need an SSD 1306 library. Thankfully, there is an available library from Adaproot. This one. This is a MicroPython SSD 1306 OLED driver which supports the I squared C and SPI interface which is created by Adafruit. And in order to use a library that is not built in in MicroPython firmware, we just need to upload it to the root directory. To do that, in Tony Python, we just need to open the library file which is the ssd1306.py and just sit, click file and select save as and select the MicroPython device. Let's name it ssd1306.py Let's hit enter saving and now the library is written in MicroPython root directory. To check the files in MicroPython's root directory, click View menu and select Files. And the list of files available in MicroPython device will be shown. And as you can see, it has three files which are the boot.py, the main.py and the ssd1306.py And now to use the ssd1306 library, we just need to import it. So let's create a new file and let's import the ssd1306. We also need to import the machine module for accessing the hardware. Import machine. Now let's create the regular GPIO pin named SCL using the machine, that pin, which is connected to GPIO 22. Let's set the pin direction as machine, that pin, that out. And let's also turn on the internal pull up using the machine, that pin, that pull up. This is to ensure that the I squared C lines has been pulled up to BCC. This is optional in case the I squared C device has added pull up in I squared C line, just like this OLED display. Let's also create the other I squared C line, which is the SDA, using machine that pin connected to GPIO 21. Let's set the pin direction as output. 
And let's also turn on the internal pull up. Now let's create the I squared C object using machine that I to C in capital letters. And let's set the SCL equivalent to the object we created before. And a frequency of 400 kilohertz. And lastly, let's create the OLED object using the SSD 1306 library. Let's use the class SSD 1306 underscore I squared C with a parameter of Pixel resolution as 128 by 64. Set the communication protocol we are going to use, which is the I squared C. And the I squared C address, which is 0x3c. Let's save this one to this computer as C010 underscore EX01. Let's name it simple OLED.py. Let's run it and let's just use the REPL. To print a text, use the OLED.txt function. OLED.txt Then the string we want to send, let's say microphyton, to a location 0 as x and another 0 as y. Let's send. And as you can see, there is no display until now in our OLED. Because we need to send another function which is OLED that show to refresh the display. Okay, let's try another OLED.txt. Let's say tech to tinker to an X maybe 10 and a Y of 30. Let's send this one and let's also call the OLED.show function. Another text string is displayed in the OLED. Now to clear the display, we just need to populate the whole display with block using the OLED that fill with the value of 0 for black and 1 for the value of white. Let's send. Let's also call the OLED that show to update. Display is being cleared or we could create some useful function let's say to easily print a text to the OLED display and immediately show it let's create a function let's call it def print text with a parameter of message and a coordinate for the x and y Inside the function, let's call the OLED that text using the message and the X and the Y, and we just include the OLED that show. Let's save and let's run. Let's try it. Print text. Let's say hello to a location of 1010. Hit enter and the hello message is immediately displayed. How about another message? Let's say print text 
welcome in 12 and 12 let's see what will happen and as you can see it overlaps the previously created text how about let's also include the argument clear let's add another parameter here or argument let's call it clear and if clear let's call the OLED that fill zero let's save it let's run let's call again the print text hello to allocation 1010 and another parameter which is when we put one it will clear the previous display let's just put zero as of now and let's send another message let's say welcome to a location of 2020 and another is let's try the clear here one a message of tech to tinker let's hit enter and as you can see previous display is deleted and a new text string is displayed other useful functions you can explore are here in the library so you can try these functions in it display power off for to turn off the screen this is essentially useful for battery operated projects you can adjust the contrast of the display you can invert so that is black over white or white over black and this is the show this is the field and this is the pixel to draw some graphics you can also scroll the display and these are missing from current files in github so i found it in some forums so you can use it also each line is to draw horizontal line v line for vertical line this is a single line you can draw a rectangle or a rectangle with field color inside and a bleed i'm not yet tested this one but please feel free to explore it i encourage everyone to try other functions inside this SSD 1306 library. Okay, that's all for now. If you have any question regarding this tutorial, you may write your inquiry in the comment box provided. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me thumbs up by clicking the like button and share this to your friends so that it can reach more people who might benefit from this. And if you are not yet subscribed, please do subscribe now. You might also like to visit my blog post at techtotinker.blogspot.com for more details and references such as circuit diagram and source code. Thank you and have a good day ahead. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.